even though his birth and disappearance are full of joy, I am taking it that it's full of pain and he's going through different painful situations. Similarly, Shila Gurudev said that about himself. I saw Dr. T. Gurudev's uh, magic show disciple here, and once in Badger, Dr. T. took five dollar bills from Gurudev. He you know, showed that he has no sleeves, nothing in between his fingers. He took the five dollar bill from Gurudev, went like that, and handed Gurudev a hundred dollar bill. So Gurudev said, I am the guru of all magicians. I have something special to give. That magician, that is Dr. T, he can turn five dollars into a hundred dollars. But I can turn a five dollar note into hundreds and millions and billions of dollars. So admitting that he is that magician. Just as Krishna is the free magician, and when that hunter appeared to uh, shoot him with an arrow, and Krishna appeared to die, only fools take it that he died. And Shila Gurudev gave the example of that Monday magician who came on the stage one hour later, I think many of you know the story, all the big government men were saying, he was supposed to be here at 4, now it's 4.15, now it's 4.30, now it's 4.5, we'll kill him. He comes on the stage. So he came in very closing along at 5 o'clock. They were furious. They said, what's the matter? So they said, he was supposed to be here at 4, he came at 5. We're important men, we have a lot of things to do. He said, what do you mean? It's only 4 o'clock. Just look at your watches. And they all looked at their watches, and they saw that it was, yes, yeah, only 4 o'clock. So then they realized the magic show that they had seen. So Gurudev said, so similarly, Krishna appears, or his family of associates appear to come and go and have fights and get killed, like his um, grandsons appear to have a rice wine fight with the stalks of rice and kill each other, but it was only a magic show. Then Gurudev sim said, similarly, Krishna's devotees don't die. Vishnu didn't die, even though when he didn't even feel the pain when he had all the arrows lying in a bed of arrows. For Lada Maharaj wasn't affected by the poison, so the pure devotee never died either. An interesting other thing that Shri Gurudev said about our Shri Prabhupada in regards to Naralila, sometimes we think that Naralila, the Asadai Swarilila of the Guru Taipa, manifestation of Nityananda, associate of Radharani, experiencing Asasattvi Vaas, Gavachari Vaas. But then he also has his Narvatila of feeling pain and suffering in this world. That's not what Narvatila is in relation to the spiritual master, as Srila Gurudev taught us about Srila Prabhupada. There was a series of incidents in the 70s, in the 1970s, which only Gurudev could reconcile. That is, there were a series of abuses in the Gurukula, which was established by Shiloh Prabhupada. There were many Gurukula um, schools all over the world, and there were many abuses in it. So in the 90s, there was a controversy. And the controversy, both sides were wrong. Prabhupada knew everything about the abuses, but he didn't do anything because the abuses went on until finally they had to tell him. And the other side said, no, he's not a bad person. He didn't know about the abuses. But what does that mean? It means he's an ordinary person, not Sri Kalayan, the spiritual master. The pure devotee is Sri Kalayan. So both sides were wrong. So Shula Burde in a lecture in 1997 in um, Holland, he reconciled the whole thing in a series of one and a half lectures. He said that Shula Prabhupada being an Uthma Adhikari, he knows everything. He knew that the sannyasis that he made sannyasi would fall down, but still he made them sannyasi. Why? 
He knew that there would be abuses in Gurukula, and still he established the Gurukula, and he pretended that he didn't know that it was happening until it was seriously brought to his attention. Why? He did that for the benefit of the whole universe. He did know, and he did do something. Because we know that anyone who comes to a modified spiritual master, he becomes free from this karma. As Shula Prabhupada said, if somebody gets a cut finger, he should think, my whole body would have been locked, my whole arm would have been locked off. But because I've taken shelter of a modified guru, Krishna is giving me this cut finger. And Shula Prabhupada told us that if a very rich man's son does a crime, he can be fined $100,000 easily. But because he's a rich man's son, his rich father is a good friend of the judge. The judge is thinking, well, I have to find him something. His father is my friend, so I'll find him one dollar. So similarly, we get what Prophets calls a token execution of the law of karma. So this is what happens to children in the world below. Then when Shula Gurde was explaining it, he immediately, uh, because the successful spiritual master, his, one of his duties is to defend the integrity of his predecessor, uh, Acharya, of the Acharya who comes just before him. So similarly, Shula Gurde was saying about Prabhupada, the whole Guru incident, and how was, what he did was the benefit of the whole universe. He immediately compared Shri Prabhupada with the pastime of Lord Ram. The demon Marichi was taking the form of a very beautiful golden deer. And Sita said to Ram, Oh, please go and get that deer. If you can't get him alive, then kill him and bring him back dead. I want to use his skin. So Ram went out as though he was an illusion that this was an ordinary beautiful deer. But Ram did this why? So that he could ultimately kill all the demons, establish religion, destroy a religion, and now his pastimes are purifying the entire universe. Krishna knew that if the Pandavas would play dice, they would lose and they would lose their kingdom. But he didn't say anything. Why? For the benefit of the whole universe. For the Mahabharata to be manifest, and especially for Bhagavad Gita to be manifest. So, Srila Gurudev is uh, was teaching us so much about the reality of our spiritual, of our Srila Prabhupada. He said, The difference between me and your Prabhupada is that I am localized, and he is everywhere. So, I am within him, and he is also within me. Just like our Srila Prabhupada's Prabhupada, Srila Gurudev said about him, somebody asked me a question that I had never heard before, and I gave an answer that I had never heard before. Somebody asked me, where is Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur now? And I answered, he's in every hour. So similarly, our spiritual master Srila Prabhupada, who is an associate of Radha and Krishna, and who are traveling with them on their road show through infinite universes. That is, in one second, Krishna takes birth in one universe, and the next second, or Khan, which is like a fraction of a second, he takes birth in the next universe, which is the second second in the first second universe, and the second second in the second universe. Then the third second, he takes birth in the third universe, which is the second second in the second universe, the third second in the third universe, and our Shiva Prabhupada is going with him all over the various universes. At the same time, he's participating in all the uh, infinite pastimes of Radha and Krishna and all their associates, which are going on simultaneously in Goloka Vrindavan. Before I met Shiva Prabhupada, sorry, before I met Shiva Gurudev, if somebody had asked me, where is Shiva Prabhupada now? I wouldn't have been able to answer. But now I know what I just said, and I know what Prabhupada is doing at any time of the day. 
I want to ask you, Gurudev, can you tell me about your pastimes with Radha and Krishna, what you're doing with them? He said, I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about the love of his money. What's the single thing there? Whatever Srila Radhanandasa Swami is praying for is what Srila Radhanandasa Swami as Rati Manjuri is doing in the local Vrindavan, which Gurudev was hinting, that's what I'm doing, and that's what our Srila Prabhupada is doing. Srila Gurudev said, I'm assisting him, and we're together in the clinch under our Param Gurudev. Under his guidance, because that Anagatya is eternal. When Shua Prabhupada is going to leave us in New York, Chief uh, Prabhupada Nalamaraj mentioned that I met Shua Prabhupada in 1966. That was in uh, October. And then in January, he was going to be leaving for the first time to open up his second Iskand temple that was in San Francisco. So when I heard about it, I was shocked. I said, at that time, we called him Swamiji. He said, Swamiji, we hear that you're leaving. Are you going to be leaving? When are you leaving? So he said, do you think that would ever leave you? Don't think like that. I am always with you, and you are always with me. One time we asked him, when he was giving us a darshan in, um, in Boston, in the late 60s, we asked him, to the prophet, do you hear Krishna's flutes? So he said, why not? And then he immediately started quoting the various verses in the Sattva Swami Asakam. How they're always, uh, even though they've given up their prayer aristocracy and they're uh, just going going on, actually they're bathing repeatedly uh, in the gopi's love for Krishna. And even though they're under a desire tree, a different desire tree every night, under those desire trees are all valuable jewels. So he's giving hints about himself. Uh, in the beginning, he engaged me in painting, as soon as I met him practically. And I did one painting of Madhanmo Khan Temple in Vrindavan, which I think you've all been to when you're in Vrindavan. And when I presented the finished painting to him, he said, this is just before he left for India that first time. He said, now I can go. Now I feel comfortable to go. Because you're chanting here. You're chanting here, and I'm chanting in Vrindavan. And by that chanting, we're all packed up tight. I wrote him a letter and asked, we hear that separation is more powerful in relation to Krishna and the gopis. In fact, Srila Gurudev gave one class in Australia uh, from which came the book Gurudev Dharma. And in that, he said the guru is more intimate than your own Atma. That is, when we see Gurudev, we can think, there is my Atma on the screen. If we see him getting massaged, you can think, there's my Atma getting massaged. So then I told Gurudev that when I see you, you said that in class the other night, but when I see you, I don't think like that, that you're my Atma. I always feel so guilty that I'm not serving you nicely. So Gurudev said, yeah, that's why I made the class. Actually, there's never any separation between my disciples and I, between you and I. Just as there's never any separation between Krishna and the gopis, and yet at the same time, they're always feeling separation. Just like water and its wetness is never separated, so similarly, Guru and disciple, me and you, are never separated. So similarly, Srila Prabhupada wrote me in the letter that with the spiritual master also, separation is more important, because when there's separation, then everything of all the time of the meeting comes into the forefront of the heart, and the meeting becomes more powerful. Srila Gurudev was explaining to our godbrothers about separation from Srila Prabhupada. Uh, separation from Srila Prabhupada. He said, we're going on, today is the Mahamahosa day of Srila Prabhupada's separation. He 
that on every other day, we're going on, even though we're separated from, we're going on with our life very, very pleasantly. We're not breathing in separation, like Shri Radhana does with Swami. If we want, and even on the Mahotsava, we're so much busy in getting ready for the Mahotsava that no tears come. Maybe when we talk about him, then maybe one tear will fall, and maybe it won't. Because the Mahotsava is very grand and no tear will come. But actually, real bhajan is to feel separation from the spiritual master. And this is confirmed by Karam Gurudev when he's speaking about the Guru being the magician on the stage. That separation gives rise to increasing beautiful meanings. The so Gurudev said when one does keen service to Sri Guru, to Sri Prabhupada, to Sri Prabhupada, then you will feel separation from him. And because everything depends on our relationship with Sri Guru, there's no relationship with Radha and Krishna or any um, Sitaliya Dasi service to Sri Radhika without feeling that intense separation from Sri Guru. So it's uh, so very fortunate that uh, Srila Prabhupada has uh, manifested in the form of Srila Guru. One last thing as I ask him, it seems that every question that I have, when I first met him in the early 90s, it seems that every question that I have for you, you answer just like my Prabhupada answer. Should I understand it that Shula Prabhupada is speaking through you? So Shula Gurudev said, if you have got that faith, I'll answer. Lord Premanandi, how do you
from his place within the grand guru parampara. One thing I have noticed in the years that I have been associated with Vaishnavas is that many of us, being new, tend to sectionalize and make sectarian our relationship with our guru, our group, this is our institution, our sangha, and somebody else is that sangha, that institution. And oftentimes by doing that, we misunderstand the actual grander position of our own guru by marginalizing him and limiting him to a particular sangha or institution. We actually do a disservice to our guru and to the mission that he has come to promote. Shri Prabhupada always spoke of himself in terms of his relationship with the Grand Guru Prasara. How many thousands of times did he quote, A Ram Param 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 Bona fides in terms of his individual qualifications, his intelligence, his learning, his renunciation, even his vast and unlimited love of Krishna. He always spoke of himself as a representative of his own guru and the guru parampara. And this cannot be overlooked. It should never be overlooked. Because if we do, we run the risk of creating great effects to guru and to those who are connected to him in that same world for us. We may not have that vision, being young and neophyte devotees, we may see our guru in that limited way, but you should never, ever, ever do that. So I wanted to continue briefly a theme that was begun by Puchipai Kirtabraj in his speech this morning. He began speaking about our group from Bra as it began to manifest through the personality of Shilabhakti and Rakshad Bhura. We call the conception or the preaching that we do now the Bhagavad Gita, the current of spiritual knowledge that comes through the line of Bhakti and Rakshad Bhura. Bhakti and Rakshad Bhura's position in the modern Gaudiya Vaishnav history is so significant because he revived and put into modern form in a way that is understandable by modern culture the deep and esoteric teachings of the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition. Bhakti Gautama was an intellectual giant who was educated uh, by the British in their educational system and he understood the modern philosophy, modern science, he understood the teachings of all major religions, and he flew across two worlds. On one leg, he stood upon the great Vedic traditions that came through Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and with the other, he understood perfectly the modern world. And in his writings, he very, very beautifully made the uh, subtle and esoteric conceptions of Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy accessible and understandable and a highly, highly attractive to modern people. Then his son, Shri Bhakti Siddhartha Sarkar Bhakti Kampar, put that into a form which could then be used to spread that teaching throughout the entire world. He actually established the model for the modern preaching mission by his Gaudiya Mahas, by establishing, as we heard this morning, 64 months around India, sending preachers out to different countries in Europe and around the world through literature and other things, and setting the template for what was then to become the preaching mission that we know was done by my good name, Shula Ezi Bhakti Vinasaswami Now, many people, and us included in our early days, thought that Shula Prabhupada was a singular and only true descendant of Shula Bhakti Siddhartha Sarasvati Prabhupada uh, because of the magnificent work he did. But actually by saying that, we neglected to understand how this current of Bhakti Vinodha Thakur was being transmitted. Yes, our Shula Prabhupada spread this message throughout the world in a magnificent, marvelous way, imitating and taking the format that was established by his own birthday and transplanting 
back into the West. He actually took the Dodia Mont Bravo and took it and implemented it into the West as far as possible. In simplest terms, what is the Dodia Mont Bravo? Have you ever thought about that? What does it mean, Dodia Mont? What is a mud? We hear the word all the time. A mud is a place actually where people come together to associate, to learn, to act like Vaishnavs, serve Vaishnavs, serve Radha Krishna, and develop the qualities of a Vaishnav. And Shura Bhakti Siddhartha says that we're an established human faculty of models like that. And he had many powerful, powerful disciples, many of whom continued that even after his disappearance. And as Sri Madhavar Mahasaya in his own lecture, that there were two kinds of disciples. Some of them deviated from the mood and desires of Shri Bhakti Siddhartha Sarasvati Prabhupada and became uh, more interested in promoting their own self interest than in spreading his mission. But there were a very strong contingent of powerful preachers who also became Acharyas who continued the mission of Shri Bhakti Siddhartha Sarasvati Prabhupada in publishing books, opening books, traveling throughout India to continue to preserve and disseminate that message. The most prominent that we know of, Shri Bhakti Pratyakashi Prasadakash, was actually so close to our own Shri Prabhupada. I remember a few years ago when we were doing this clarification of Shri Prabhupada, I got up and spoke. And I told the story that I'm a little embarrassed about, but I elaborated and made some inventions in that story. I'm sure the brilliant thing is stopping. He said, where have you heard this? Where does this come from? I've never heard this. And he said, you said a wrong thing. Because you made it appear that there was a difference between your Guru Maharaj and mine. He said, I was like my Guru's shadow. There was no difference in thought between them. In thought and mood, they were as one. And when I heard that, of course I felt a little bit really in the shame that I had done this kind of representation. At the same time, I felt so happy that Shula Gurde had taken the time to share this intimate piece of knowledge about my own Gurde and about his own very close and deep spiritual connection with his son Yasuru and Shula Gurde's own Guru. And it opened up a whole new world for me. So chastisement is a good thing. Because just by chastisement, Buddha lifts our conception and purifies our misconceptions. But then by that, I began to realize the power of it. And began to see that actually the plan of the Buddhists and other sons of her had more than one branch. I used to always think that the only plan of fulfillment of this mission was Shulamaka and going to the rest. That was part of it. But the other beautiful, harmonizing part of it was that he had a very dear and important disciple in India who was doing the monumental task of preserving the true teachings of the Sluka Rupa Guru Varga, the conceptions of Rupa Goswami, maintaining the Gaudiya Mahalala, reviving the publishing of books, and vigorously preaching all over India. And I became more enthused to reread the biography of Shri Bhaktivedanta Geshe Goswami Raj and then to understand how deeply and closely they were connected. And by doing that, I began to realize and appreciate the actual nature of Shri Prabhupada even more. Because by understanding those who were so close and dear to him, someone who was so much like him, I began to understand him more. And then, something very amazing also occurred to me, that then I began to see the synthesis of these two branches of the same mission, that Shri began all over the world to establish the foundation of Goyama, by opening temples in that model, by establishing a philosophical foundation by which people could come to understand the mission and move in a Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Meanwhile, that true and deeply conceived conception 
was being nurtured and revealed even more and more by the disciple of Shilabhakti Vyankesha Goswami Raj and his disciple Shilabhakti Dr. Ramana Goswami Raj, Shilabhakti Dr. Chirikra Raj, and ultimately by Shilabhakti Dr. Narayan Goswami Raj. And then, when Shilabhakti himself came to the West, that was actually the coming together and the reuniting of the mission, the true mission, of Shula Bhakti Pranatha Saraswati Thakur, Shula Bhakti Rao Thakur, Shula Vishnatha Bhakti Thakur, Shula Rupa Goswami, all of our Guru Bhargava. So, our big thing, hearing all the wonderful glorious Vaishnavas and their beautiful descriptions, I just felt this really deep sense of harmony and togetherness with all the Vaishnavas all over the world. Even though one institution, another institution, this conception is slightly different, this conception is slightly different than us. But really, the glory of my Guru Dev, he wanted that all Vaishnavas learn to understand, appreciate, cooperate, and unite together to spread the Krishna consciousness, this Bhakti Yoga, throughout the entire world. And thinking deeply on his desire, it made me realize also that Srila Gurudev is nothing less than that same desire. And he has all of us over and over again. Please, form this society. Please, work together. Please, publish and distribute my books. Please, over and over and over. Now when we're meditating on the conception of separation, in very painful and amazing ways. And I want to tell you that as disciples, the greatest gift that we can have is the order of Sri Guru. <laughs> Don't abandon it. Take it through, keep it to your heart. Meditate on the order. Shri Prabhupada's order, not that there's a Sri Guru's order. It's the Bible wish, they are one and the same. Let us take this moment, this day, to contemplate on that, to find ourselves together, heart and mind, to fulfilling the divine order of our entire Guru Bhagavad, manifested in the words, the teachings, and the personalities of Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Bhagavad and Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Raj. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Wonderful speeches, brother proposes is astonishing, but it's coming from the hearts of all the Vaishnavas. Now I want to request uh, one of Sri Gurudev's very dear, uh, he calls her his sister always, and that is our god sister, Shivati Vrindavan <coughs> Vila Sinisi. Many times Sri Gurudev refers to her as, you know, one of those young girls who came to our Srila Prabhupada, who gave their complete youth, teeny aged, uh, and distributing these books for many, many years, so much dedicated seva. And now she's earned the right to live in Vrindavan Dham and to do bhajan. <laughs>
And I'd like to thank you all for forgiving us, praying us, and so I want to thank you for your time. Because I definitely depend on the Lord's gift, Shri Guru and the Vaishya. I'm definitely a very focused disciple of Shiva Prabhupada. But anyhow, Shiva Prabhupada is so hard that he accepts everyone, even the most tolerant. And that's our qualification. That's my qualification, because I am definitely among the most tolerant. This is who Shiva Prabhupada is to me. Shiva Prabhupada has so many glories. He has glories that are as high as God ever. Right? We've, heard, we've heard so many of his stories. How he went to the West, how he ordered his food, how he just simply chanted Hare Krishna, and the whole world fell at his feet. Shiva Prabhu was so amazing. He had the order of his guru on his head, in his heart, everywhere. He had no fear. He went everywhere chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Rama,
when he would go on this side. He was my best friend. So this is Sri Guru. He's all these glorious things, but he's our personal best friend. And this is someone that we want to be with forever. And this kind of attachment, this is what will take us to the spiritual world. Because what is it? We want to be with him forever. We cannot be here forever. This is not the eternal platform. This material world is temporary. Our relationships here are temporary. They're on the external platform. Our relationship with she grew is eternal in the spiritual world. You see? And so he makes the story that then he tells us, okay, so now you have to follow this process. Please follow the process that's been given by Rupa Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami. Please chant Hare Krishna, follow in their footsteps. Like this. And then you'll come to know who you are, you'll come to know who I am, and she might be uh, Shamarayan said, our Guru Day, and Shiva Prasad, they're all followers of Sri Rupa Goswami. That means they're all in the camp of Sri Rupa. They're my servants. They're maid servants of Shiva Prasad. And we also actually have that potential. And that's where our eternal relationship will be. Assisting our Guru Sakis in their favor that you will be sure. That's where we're going to be with them forever. That's where we're going to attain our real happiness, not here. Here, we have to develop selfless service to Sri Guru. This is what they've done. Their Guru has left. Shiva Prabhupada's Guru left. He left too. Shiva Gurudev's Guru has left. Left him. What did they do? They didn't sit around and just cry. No. They served. They worked hard selflessly for their Guru. Because what is the essence of Rav's bhakti? The essence of Rav's bhakti is selflessness, withdrawal, deep attachment, unquenchable thirst to serve Krishna as the maidservant of Srimati Radhika. Rati, that love and affection for Radha Krishna, but it's selfless. One, no motivation, no material motivation, nothing, uninterrupted. So we have to start here with Guru Seva. So Guru, he says, okay, I'm here. I'll train you. I'm teaching you. Then he went. He disappears. He's watching. He's giving a lesson. Now he's testing. Okay, you say you love me. You're so attached. You know? Okay, but what about what I love you? What are you going to do? What are we going to do? Are we going to selflessly serve our Guru Day with every bit of 